So coming up in a couple of weeks' time is going to be UFC Fight Night, Kaikara France taking on Amir Albazi in the main event. Now, if you didn't know, coming up this weekend of me recording is actually Road to UFC, and I have done my predictions for my channel already, so those videos are already out, and there's like another bunch of fights that you can get this weekend, the weekend before this event where there is no UFC, there is going to be the Road to UFC tournament, and as always, before we get into it, we've got my We Want Picks, you can sign up and you can get a little three-day free trial, you get access to absolutely everything that We Want Picks Premium offers for three days for free, cancel any time, and also my 100 and 25% sign up bonus for BetUS right there. Now let's get straight into the picks. Now this is an interesting one and it's not a good one because I don't have the best read on either of these two despite them being insanely experienced but I am still just kind of going to go with Felipe Linz. I kind of like the way that he's been fighting recently. He's been a lot more aggressive than he has in the past and they probably will end up keeping this fight on the feet against Maxime Grishin. Now Maxime Grishin, you know, he's an older guy and he's very, very experienced, but I kind of do like the way that Felipe Linz has recently been fighting. He's recently been fighting a lot more aggressive. You know, he went out there against OSP, just dominated OSP, who's an older guy himself, and then he went out there and he beat Marcin Prakniao as well, and that was a pretty bad fight, but, you know, I'm going to go with Felipe Linz as the underdog. This is a pick that probably could and very likely will change, so I will make a follow-up video probably next week when I've had more time to look into the fights, but... This is a sketchy one to start the card. Do I think you should put any money on it? Probably not. I think if Linz wins, it's going to be inside the distance. But I think if Grecian wins, it will be by decision. It should be an interesting fight. I've got Linz. I don't feel good about it. And we're going to move on to the next one. Luan Lacerda taking on Damon Blackshear. I've got to go with Luan Lacerda here. I mean, I think that he's actually a better fighter than Damon Blackshear. And in my opinion, and in many other people's opinions as well, if you go to MMA decisions, the majority of people actually believe that Demo um, sorry, Luan Lacerda actually defeated Cody Stamen. And Cody Stamen is like borderline ranked right now. And I, I thought that he won. And on top of that, that fight took place on the feet, which was very odd because um, Luan Lacerda, before that fight... He was really bad at striking, man. I was watching this guy's regional career. He had Jose Aldo in his corner for some of his fights, which was amazing. But man, this guy cannot strike. And he made um, Cody Stamen look like a pretty bad striker, right? So maybe all of a sudden, Luan Lasota's striking's gotten a lot better. But the way that this guy gets it done is in the grappling, and he will be the better grappler. Will he be the better wrestler? Absolutely not. This guy is not a good wrestler. The way that this guy goes for takedowns, I'm not even like joking. You watch his regional fights, he'll go for a takedown. And you kind of like half, put half effort into it and then pull guard in the middle of the takedown. Like he doesn't actually really finish takedowns and get on top. He's got a very weird sort of wrestling style. But if he wants it on the ground, he'll get it to the ground somewhere. And he will be the better grappler out of the two. He might not even be the better striker, but he looks so good against Cody Stamen on the feet. Um, he should be able to get it done. He throws a lot of kicks as well. But uh, I think Luan Lacerda probably locks up a sub, man. I think he submits Damon Blackshear here. I think he's the better grappler. I think Damon Blackshear is a really good fighter. I think he just got um, given a couple of bad fights. You know, like he fought Yusuf Salal on short notice. Ended up getting a draw. And then he fought Fareed Basharat, who is like the up-and-coming younger Basharat brother. And that was just a bad matchup for him, man. It was like a, he was facing a guy that does exactly what he does, but better. So um, I feel like he's kind of got a similar matchup to that here. I think Luan Lacerda submits him. And I think he gets it done. So I'm going to go with Luan Lasota by submission. This next one is Junyu Frey taking on Elise Reed. I'm going to go with Elise Reed here. I just don't trust Junyu Frey. Junyu Frey is actually a pretty underrated wrestler. I actually think she's actually quite a good wrestler. But um, she's also very small for the division. She used to fight at 105 pounds. Then she came into the UFC and obviously now has to fight at straw weight. But um... When it comes down to it, man, I just don't think Chin Yufre is that good. She's not that good at striking. I do think she was robbed against Vanessa Demopoulos. And um, Vanessa Demopoulos, as we guys kind of found out against Carolina Kolkavich, she's got absolutely no idea what she's doing. And Jin Yufre lost to her. I thought she won, but she still lost anyway. And then she got knocked out easily by Pollyanna Viana. Elise Reed, I believe, has a black belt in Taekwondo. And she's a very competent grappler herself. I've seen Elise Reed win fights purely based off her grappling. Elise Reed just beat... 
um, not Loma Lukbumi, to beat Melissa Martinez. And Melissa Martinez is like a former kickboxing world champion. So um, I like Elise Reed to win this matchup here. I don't think Jin Frey. Jin Frey probably will want to wrestle here. But even then, I don't think she finds success. I think Elise Reed will be, be the better striker. And I think that when it comes down to the pure grappling, I think Elise Reed could probably get it done as well. Um, I'm very interested that the lines are so close. But um, I'm, I'm definitely on Elise Reed in this matchup here. I don't think Jin Frey kind of um, has a chance, really. This is, this is weird. The odds are scaring me because I'm way too confident in Elise Reed for pick him odds. Now, Daniel Santos taking on Johnny Munoz Jr. Um, I was a lot more confident in Daniel Santos before the fight got rescheduled. The fight was actually meant to happen a few weeks ago. I believe it was on the prelims of a pay-per-view card. Daniel Santos, I believe, pulled out. I'm not too sure why, but um, we're back anyway. We're back here. He took on, uh, on short notice, I believe, again, uh, John Castaneda. Knocked him out and uh, took a lot of damage in that fight, but he come back. He looks like Charlie Olives when he's got his blonde hair. He fights like Charlie Olives, man. Aggressive Muay Thai, aggressive BJJ style. Johnny Munoz Jr., he's a decent wrestler and a decent grappler, but his striking ain't that good. He didn't look that good against Ludovic Shilinian. Like, he showed good grappling. But it still was an impressive performance against a guy that just is not UFC level in Ludovic Shalinian. So I think Daniel Santos, man, I think he gets it done on the feet. Daniel Santos with that brawling, not really brawling, but like technical, aggressive, all-out Muay Thai style, high output, high pace. I think he's going to put that high output and high pace on Johnny Munoz Jr. and knock him out. Like we saw Tony Gravely knock out Johnny Munoz Jr., with like an uppercut that didn't seem like it had like any power on it whatsoever. So maybe Johnny, Johnny Munoz Jr. has no chin and Daniel Santos could maybe expose that. But I just think he's going to knock him out, man, using his Muay Thai. I think he gets it done with the hands. If he has to, he can get it done on the ground too. He's a good grappler. I like Daniel Santos just to, to knock out Johnny Munoz Jr. I don't think Johnny Munoz Jr. is that good. He's a decent grappler. He's a decent wrestler. But when it comes down to a matchup where he's going to be the worst striker, the least dangerous striker, I think he's going to get put out. I think he's going to get put out by mini Charles Oliveira. This next one here is Andrei Olovsky versus Dontale Mays. I'm going to pick Andrei Olovsky because I don't, I just don't think, I don't think Dontale Mays is that good. I really don't. Now, Andrei Olovsky is 44 years old. He wins decisions he probably shouldn't, like the Jake Collier fight, he shouldn't have won that. And then it was a split decision against Jared Vandera. That was a little bit closer, though. I mean, he did beat Carlos Felipe, but, um, yeah, man, Andrei Olovsky, he's having close fights, man. He's having close decision wins. Then he took on Marcos Ruggiero de Lima, who was a little bit of a beast. And, um, a weird fight, like, weird fight. Like, Andrei Olovsky, in an exchange, like, maybe, like, knocked himself out. I don't know. Like, if you watch the fight, he goes down, but nothing hits him. Marcos Ruggiero de Lima never hits him anywhere. Um, maybe he knocked himself out. I don't know, but then he got submitted anyway. But the point is, I think Andrei Olovsky beats Dontale and Mays. Dontale and Mays... For some weird reason, a lot of people were picking Dontale Mays to beat Augusto Sakai. I understand Sakai was on a losing streak, but Dontale Mays is not that good, man. Augusto Sakai just kind of beat him up and made every... I don't understand why people picked Mays in their matchup. But anyway, um, I mean, he lost to Hamdi Abdel Wahab, who was on who was on the source. But Hamdi Abdel Wahab was like, out wrestling him. Former like Egyptian wrestler as well, I believe. But um, Olympian as well in wrestling too. But, uh, you know, these wins, they're not that good, man. Like, Josh Parisian. Who's Josh Parisian? Like, he's just getting fed to up-and-coming guys and losing. Rocky Martinez ain't in the UFC anymore. Was never UFC level. Um, yeah, I, just, I think Don Talley Mays, he's not that good. Like, all he is is, like, a flashy striker. But that's it. Like, he's got very interesting kicks. I mean, he's big for the division. But Olovsky, if he has to, he can take him down. He can clinch him up like um, Augusto Sakai did. I think Olovsky wins a decision. I just don't see Mays... I don't see Mays finishing Olovsky, and I think the win minute winner will be Andre Olovsky in this matchup. The next one is John Castaneda taking on Matthias Mendonca. You've got to go with Matthias Mendonca in this one, man. I've got him as the underdog. He is another shoot box guy. Very, very, very fun fighter. Um, offensive Muay Thai, offensive grappling. You know how it is for the shoot box guys. They fight, they're, they're, they're just a little copy and paste. They're literally copy and paste of Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira is like... The, the, the best version of a shootbox fighter. And these Mateus Pendonkas and Daniel Willy Santos, they are like 
they're the money Charlie Olives, you know, like they're the up and coming guys. There's like Felipe dos Santos as well, who's going to be on Dana White's contender series. Like there's some good fighters, man, are up and coming from Shootbox. But Mateus Mendonca is one of them. You know, I actually thought he had a pretty good chance to beat Javid Basharat as a massive underdog, but he did get outclassed in that matchup. But he still, you know, had a pretty good show in his debut. Like that's a tough debut. He knocked out Ashik Ajim, but Ashik Ajim I think lost again since then, so that's not really the best look. But John Castaneda is a good wrestler. He can usually keep a good pace, but I think on the short notice, catch weight, he, he gassed out against Daniel Santos after really hurting him. I've seen um, John Castaneda get really good wins, like Miles John. That's a really good win. And then, of course, he knocked out Eddie Wineland. But Eddie Wineland was on his way out of his career then. I've got to go with the more dangerous fighter, in my opinion, Mateus Mendonca. And I think it's a very similar matchup to the Daniel Willie Cat Santos fight because they both fight very similarly. And maybe John Castaneda, I think that might actually benefit John Castaneda, funnily enough. But the reason why I feel like that way is that John Castaneda had a lot of success against Daniel Santos. And I feel like if he can be a little bit more reserved, he probably can beat Mateus Mendonca with a better game plan and fight a little bit smarter. But Mateus Mendonca is so dangerous, man. This guy doesn't mess around. I think he's going to knock out John Castaneda. And I think he's going to get it done within the first two rounds. So give me Mateus Mendonca. And then on top of that as well, he did go a hard three rounds against Javid Basharat. Javid Basharat did take over as the fight went on. But Mateus Mendonca was there. He was, having a, he, was, he was having a pretty good fight, in my opinion, even though he lost. We can move on now. Eliseu Zaleski taking on Abubakar Namagomedov. I'm going to go with another underdog here. I'm going with Abubakar Namagomedov. Now, do I think Abubakar Namagomedov the best fighter in the world? No, no I don't, and I think he's probably like the worst fighter to come out of the Khabib camp. Um, maybe to get Ulanbekov is, but Ububakar Namagomedov, he, he's, he's nothing too special. Um, but he, he is a good fighter, like I, I did pick him to lose against Gadziyam Magadziev, and he did look pretty good in that fight. But then before that, he took a lot of time off and fought Jared Gordon, Jared Gordon, sorry, who um, got cut from the UFC, but I think he's back. I think he come back on short notice, so unless I've gotten confused with someone else. But anyway, at least Zaleski's taking a lot of time off. You know, he absolutely beat up Benoit Saint-Denis, who took on him on short notice, upper weight class, absolutely dominated that fight, beat him up badly. But we see him when he loses fights, like especially against Li Jing Liang, who's a worse wrestler than Romagomedov. These guys are taking him down. These guys are taking Elusiu Zaleski down. I think Abubakar Namagomedov is going to take down Elusiu Zaleski in one decision. I think he's going to be able to out-wrestle Elusiu Zaleski. Do I think Abubakar Namagomedov is like a future title challenger or anything like that? No, but I think he can get past an older Elusiu Zaleski who's taken a lot of time off and um, has been taken down in the past, and that's what Abubakar is going to try and do. I think on the feet, Zaleski is going to be better, but I think Namagomedov is going to take him down, and I think he's going to win a decision. Garam Kutatalidzi is taking on Jamie Malaki. Now, Jamie Malaki, he's the hooligan, man. <laughs> but um, I, I do like Garam Kutatalidzi here. He's probably one of my more confident picks on the card. And it's not really a disrespect to Jamie Malaki. That's more in respect to Garam Kutatalidzi. But the thing is, though, Garam he's, he's gets getting injured, man. He keeps not fighting often. You know, he fought against Mateus Gamrot. Um, iffy decision could go either way. A lot of people still actually argue about that fight to this day. And then he fought Demir Ismagilov, and once again, people still argue about that fight. It could go either way. Now, I did think Demir Ismagilov won. I think I'm actually in the minority on that opinion, but the point is, Gurum Kutatalidze is a very good striker, and he's got pretty good takedown defense as well, and he can keep the fight on the feet, and he's probably going to be the better fighter on the feet in this matchup as well. Jamie Malaki can mix it up, but in my opinion, I think he robbed Michael Johnson, man. I thought Michael Johnson won that fight. And then he came back, and he did beat Francisco Prado, and he did look very good in that fight. One thing that I do really, really respect about Jamie Malarkey, and I think this is actually something that not a lot of fighters tend to do, even though they probably should, he listens to his corner, man. Like, in between rounds, you watch this guy fight, and he's talking to his corner, and his corner's giving him advice, and you see Jamie Malarkey use that advice, and he listens, and he talks, and he's really good communicator with his corner. So if anything's going wrong, Jamie Malaki's going to get a good game plan from his cornermen, who are very good cornermen as well, and he's going to go out and utilize that. But against Garam, if Garam fights anything like he did against these top 15 level opponents, Demir is making love in the top 15, Mateus Gamrot now in the top 10, um, you know, he, he he's probably going to beat Jamie Malaki and then kind of earn himself maybe a shot against someone like Matt Frivola or someone like that. So I think um, we're going to go with Garam Kutatalidze here. I think he finds a decision. I think he wins a decision. I think maybe Jamie Malaki might have a moment or two, but I think Garam 
keeps the fight on the feet and just beats up uh, Jamie Malaki to a decision. But Jamie Malaki's a tough dude, man. I think that he's going to stay in there for three rounds. This one is Karini Silva taking on Ketlin Souza. Um, it really comes down to can Ketlin Souza keep Karini Silva from taking her down? And I think no. Karini Silva, 15 wins, 15 finishes at women's flyweight. That is absolutely insane. And I think she's going to be able to find another finish here. Karini Silva is really, really good, man. She either finishes her opponents by submission or ground and pound. And Ketlin Souza has been signed, I believe, from Invicta. Uh, well, she has looked pretty good. She hasn't been able to get her own offensive wrestling going. But she's kind of taking this fight on semi-short notice against Karina Silva, man, who's got good wins in her career. Like, she beat Pollyanna Batanyo, Batalio by submission. She beat Kihu Yan, who was a very good prospect coming into China. And before that, you know, she beat a couple other good opponents as well. I think Karina Silva is going to be able to have success with her offensive wrestling and grappling. She's going to be able to get some ground and pound away. And I think she can find a submission or win by TKO. In this fight, so I've got Karini Silva to win inside the distance, most likely by submission, but she does have ground and pound TKO wins on her record as well. We now move on to Tim Elliott taking on Victor Altamariano. I do think Tim Elliott wins this fight here. Unfortunately for Tim Elliott, though, he has kind of got a lot of things going on in his private life, which is a shame. Um, but I think he still beats Victor Altamariano. Now, I think actually Victor Altamariano was robbed against Carlos Hernandez. Maybe I'll win an island in that one there, but I thought I thought Carlos Hernandez lost his Dana White's Contender Series fight, and then I thought that he lost his UFC debut against Victor Altamirano. Um, but, you know, he bounced back. He beat Daniel Lasorda back when that was a decent win, I guess, and then he beat Vinicius Salvador recently, who was a savage. He took this fight on short notice. I think he's replacing a high-ranked opponent, but I can't remember who, so I'm actually going to check, sorry. But when it comes down to it, man, I think Tim Elliott, is, she's, he's going to be veteran savvy, savvy. You know, he went out there, he beat Tegi Ulanbekov, took down Tegi Ulanbekov. I think he can go out there and go out there and take on Victor Altamirano and take him down and control him as well. I think he's going to just kind of win a decision, showing off his veteran skills, take down Victor Altamirano. And um, yeah, I think Victor Altamirano wants to keep the fight on the feet. Do I think he can do that? Probably not. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got to go with Elliott. I think he can offensively wrestle here and uh, win the fight that way. Jim Miller is taking on Jared Gordon. Gordon taking this fight on short notice is scary, and it's even more scary, man, when he got KO'd very recently. Like, I know it was, like, a no contest because he was, um, like, headbutted by Bobby Green. Um, pretty dodgy situation, but the point is, dude, Jared Gordon was KO'd in that situation, man, and um, now he's back. You know, now he's back, he hasn't given his brain, he hasn't given his head, he hasn't given his body time to recover from getting knocked out. Normally a lot of fighters, they take a long time off, you know. If Jared Gordon come back, you know, three months after, I'd still mention it. I mean, he got KO'd recently, he got KO'd three months ago. But now he's coming back about a month after getting knocked out by Bobby Green. I just don't really like that at all from him. But when it comes down to it, man, he did look really good against Bobby Green on the feet before that happens. And maybe Bobby Green was trying to find a way out of that fight, which is why he did that. But I think when it comes down to it, man, Jim Miller, all of a sudden, he's, he's developed this KO power. You know, he knocked out, where was he? He knocked out Nicholas Mota. Um, he knocked out Eric Gonzalez, who are, who are, they're not the best fighters in the world, but Nicholas Mott is a, pr a pretty good up-and-coming prospect himself, actually. But, man, Jared Gordon, like, I'm worried he's going to get KO'd here, but I'm going to pick him. Do I think you should bet on him? Absolutely not. He got KO'd very recently. He's a decent grappler himself when it comes down to it. Obviously, Jim Miller, some of the most submissions in uh, the UFC uh, history, most fights in the UFC history, absolute legend of the game. But um, I think Jared Gordon's going to beat him. But I think he beats him by decision, man. I think Jim Miller's always going to be there. But I think Jim, Jared Gordon beats him by decision. Gordon isn't really finishing anyone. Gordon has been KO'd before as well. Um, I believe back in his career, he's actually kind of known for being a little bit chinny. He's been KO'd four times. It's scary. It's just scary. I'm going to go with Gordon. I don't feel good about it. Alex Casario's taking on Daniel Pineda. I really like Alex Caceres in this fight, man. Daniel Pineda, um, he's going to gas out after the first round like he does every single fight. This guy's got 28 wins, 28 finishes, but every single fight, if it goes past the second round, uh, past the first round, he, he gasses, man. He's, he's got, he doesn't have the best cardio in the world. You know, he's a former um, uh, uh, USADA infringer, I guess I'm going to say, 
But um, he looked good against Takalats. He did look good against Takalats. I will give him that credit. And it was a very good coming out party for Daniel Pineda because now he's gotten the guy that is like borderline top 15. And, and Alex Casieri, he bumps in and out of that top 15 all the time. And Daniel Pineda, you know, he's obviously almost 38 years old now. He, if it's now or never, if Daniel Pineda is going to make it to the top of the UFC, it's now or never. He's got to do it now. But I don't think he can get it done, man. Alex Casieri is, man, he's, he's so technical. He's so good at what he does. Like, he's so crafty, so sneaky. Like, that KO of Julian Arosa is such an incredible knockout to me. Like, the way that he the way that he set it up, the way that he hit it, the way that Julian Arosa kind of fell for the trap, incredible knockout. Incredible knockout for Alex Casieri, uh, in my opinion. One of the KOs of the year so far. Very, very good KO. And I think he can be sneaky and be, be technical against Daniel Pineda as well. If he works the body, kicks the body, keeps the fight on the feet, which he probably will do, I think he can outstrike Daniel Pineda. I think he can beat up Daniel Pineda and probably finish him in the third round. I don't see anybody talking about Daniel Pineda's lack of cardio, which is like something that has plagued him his entire career. Um, Daniel Pineda's cardio has let him down over and over and over and over and over again. Now, maybe after some time off, after a bit of suspension, all of a sudden his cardio is better. But, you know, I think Alex Caceres is still going to be able to just out-technique him, be more technical, beat him up, beat him to a decision, or a third-round finish. So I've got Alex Caceres in this matchup here. And now in the main event, we've got Kaikara France taking on Amir Albazi. Kaikara France is the underdog. Wow, that is... Wow, okay... I didn't expect that at all. Kaikara France um, is my pick. Um, <laughs> he's like, how is the underdog? How is he the underdog? Okay, anyway, whatever. Amir Albazi, you know, he kind of, he took a bit of time off, and then he come back. But who's he beaten? You know, Francisco Figueiredo, who's, who's not even in the UFC anymore. And then Alessandro Costa, who took him on in like a week's notice. Um, and, and arguably beat him up on the feet for the first round. It, 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 dude, Amir Albazi struggled with the striking of Alessandro Costa until the second and the third round. And Kaikara France is night and day at levels above Alessandro Costa. Alessandro Costa ain't even striker. He's a grappler. Um, I know you could say the same thing about Amir Albazi. He is a grappler. But dude, you cannot str struggle with the striking of an up-and-coming guy who's borderline UFC level, who took you on on short notice... And then take on Kaikara France, who's probably one of the better strikers, better technical strikers in the flyweight division. And then on top of that as well, he just has not beaten anyone good, man. He hasn't. He just hasn't. He hasn't proven that, um, you know, he's ready for the step up in competition. Now, Kaikara France, his record is super dodgy. He had a lot of losses earlier on in his career. But you've got to look at the guys that he's beaten, man. Kaikara France, you know, beat Askar Askarov. Very good win. Actually, that is the best underdog pick I've ever actually made on my entire channel because I did pick Kaikara France to defeat Eskar Eskarov in that fight and um, it's a plus 340 underdog that is the biggest underdog I've ever predicted correctly since I started my channel now the reason why I did that and the reason why I'm going to pick him here is Kaikara France is the best defensive grappler in the flyweight division and you could almost make an argument that he's probably one of the best defensive grapplers in the entire UFC his takedown defense is absolutely fantastic. His submission and grappling defense is absolutely fantastic. The way that he's able to defend takedowns, the way that he's able to defend grappling is, is not really like anyone else in the flyweight division. It's not like anyone else almost in the whole UFC. His takedown defense and his grappling defense is untouched. It's unmatched, and that's why he beat Askar Askarov in that fight. Now, when it comes down to the Brandon Moreno fight... The way that I scored it, I thought Brandon Moreno was up two rounds. But if you actually look at the judges, I don't really know how this happened. But one judge had it 2-0 to Kaikara France. One judge had it 1-1. And one judge had it 2-0 to Brandon Moreno. Now, I can see the 1-1. I can see the 1-1. But I had it 2-0 Brandon Moreno. But I thought that Kaikara France was starting to take over the fight. You know, he was starting to make his read. He was starting to look really good in that third round. Until he did get caught by that liver kick there. Now... When it comes down to it, Kaikara France just looked really good against Brandon Moreno. Arguably was winning um, in the eyes of one judge against Brandon Moreno, who just went out there and beat Figgy. So, you know, Kaikara France has proven that he's definitely a top five, top three flyweight, maybe top four flyweight in the world right now. And he's taken on Amir Albazi, who just hasn't fought that level of competition. Alessandro Costa made his debut on short notice, dude, and looked good. Um, um, Francisco Figueiredo, who's not even UFC level, never was, dude. People... Francisco Figueiredo was losing to guys that are just not that good. And then um, Zalga Shemekilov, that was two years ago. So, like, what's going on here, man? Like, I, I, just, I think I think Kaikara France wins, and I can't believe he's the underdog. That's why I'm so shocked about, you know? And it's a five-round fight. 
I don't believe either of these two have ever gone five rounds before, but I can just trust the cardio of Kaikara France more. You know, I can trust the kickboxing experience of Kaikara France. I can trust the MMA experience of Kaikara France. You know, he's been in there with some of the best guys in the world. You know, he, like he's, um, he fought Brandon Royvel. That was an absolute battle. He defended submissions against Hegeria Bontin for the whole fight. Then he knocked out Cody Garbrandt in the first round. He beat Askar Eskarov. He had a good competitive fight against Brandon Moreno. Kaikara France is, is ready for this level of competition, and I'm just not convinced that Emi Abazi is. So the pick is Kaikara France, and I think it wins by decision or maybe late TKO. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and I will, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.